In this video, I'm going to go over uh, basically my own experiences with the GI Tanto and kind of my my opinion on it as a user of knives in a utility sense and also with interest of the possible uses of like self-defense or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to give you my experiences and why, you know, using that as why I uh, think the way I do about this knife. So. Uh, first thing to note is that this is a very inexpensive knife, which was a big attractor for me. I like inexpensive knives that actually, I, I always like to give them a chance to actually outperform uh, what people say inexpensive knives can do, right? Uh, we always want to look for deals in, uh, with modern manufacturing techniques. My, my idea of it is it doesn't actually cost that much uh, to uh, be able to uh, basically manufacture high quality stuff. The technology for molding and stuff like that it is getting more inexpensive and uh, a lot of companies can do things in house, especially big ones, mass producers, so there's not really much of a reason why mass, produ mass production needs to be so expensive. Uh, we see that even in firearms today. So <clears throat> in, in my opinion the 30, uh, between 20 and 30 dollar price mark for this uh, knife it's a hell of a deal, especially with its capabilities, so that's kind of a teaser here. I, I do appreciate this knife. So, uh, first thing you'll note about this knife, go ahead and take it out of the sheath for full presentation. It is a little bit dirty. I haven't really cleaned this up, but uh, no real need to. This is the second GI Tanto that I've had, but the other one, you know, lost its edge or whatever. It's so inexpensive, you can just buy another one. Uh, so you know, for the price of a K-bar or whatever that you'd only use for uh, utility for camping or uh, stuff around the house or even for fun. Uh, this is a killer deal, so just buying another one isn't a big deal. So the first thing you'll note is that you have this handle here. Uh, the appearance of this, it's very basic. There's no real frills to it. And the, uh, the thing that I'm kind of upset about is, you can read here, uh, Cold Steel China. It didn't used to be uh, that way. I think they were uh, doing stuff in... Uh, uh, Taiwan at first and then they moved to China. I think it's more cost savings than anything. Uh, however, it doesn't seem like the quality really got skimped on necessarily. It's just an expensive manufacturer. So I'm not really too upset about that. But the basic layout of this knife, uh, it's pretty uh, simple and you can kind of understand why it was so inexpensive to manufacture. This handle here, it's pretty smooth actually. It's a, it's a very smooth grip. It doesn't, it leaves a lot to be desired as far as like a better grip uh, but the idea of this is that it's simple you can kind of make it what you want and you also see that on the blade as well you can kind of get a double uh, you know double edge here uh, so you know it is what it is and uh, with this handle it's really not the best and I haven't done any modifications to this one because it's still in, it was still in testing phase but I'm gonna get a new one in the future that's how good this knife is in my opinion but uh, uh, as far as the handle goes, you have Allen keys right here that you can take it off and a lot of people do like 550 cord or duct tape or uh, the camo form uh, wraps or whatever. They basically make a, a basic, uh, I guess you could say grip handle to it and that's probably the best thing you can do because this stuff does slip unless you have really good like goat skin or leather gloves that really grab on to um, material. So it's not completely smooth. You can see that it does have a little bit of a contour which grabs on pretty nicely, but it's very basic. It's almost like a Glock uh, for you gun guys that know about the sights. They're basically just there uh, just so they can say they have them. They're not really uh, functional in a sense of durability. Uh, they get chipped up pretty easily. Kind of like these are not really completely functional for a utilitarian purpose because this knife being used for like uh, as they claim tactical uses or utility it can kind of slip you don't really get a good sure grip which is not a good thing unless you wanted to just use this as the base and start uh, cutting away little grooves kind of like uh, the k-bar knife has and cutting little grip grooves like a reverse uh, cut right here uh, in this direction kind of like fish scales then you could improve the grip that way but as it stands I'm not too impressed with the grip, but I do like the fact that the, you can have a lanyard, which is actually pretty important when you're dealing with a knife. Some people don't want to have a lanyard. That's up to you, but for me, I think it's good to have a lanyard, though I didn't ever attach one. So, you know, I'm talking more than doing, right? So, next thing to note about this is it's a 1055 carbon steel blade, and 
1055, uh, typically with carbon steels, you do have a little bit of flexibility. And uh, this knife, uh, being a 1055, it's uh, pretty simple to kind of stay within the tolerances to keep it as a classified 1055 because the last bit of it, uh, 55, kind of tells you how much uh, carbon steel it has in it. And, uh, you know, it, it, being that low on carbon keeps it from being too hard. It'll bend more. Like, you can see the tip here. Uh, if my camera will be generous enough to focus on this area, it may take a minute. So uh, you can see it bent the edge here, which is reparable. You, you can repair this or uh, you can fix this and get a nice edge on this again, but it may, it'll require taking off a little bit of material. But this thing doesn't typically chip very easily. Um, it hit rocks in order to chip and lose its edge, as you see here. But even this area right here, it just folded it. So I could go ahead and hone this area out and flatten it. So the heat treatment on this, uh, they say it's uh, basically like a spring steel. So it does act like that. It doesn't really bend that easily. Uh, it'll it'll more uh, lose its edge by bending rather than chipping, which is really good. Um, gives you a little bit of hope, I guess you could say. So it acts more like a machete, and it really is designed to be treated like one. 1055 is a pretty popular steel for machetes. So, <clears throat> anyways... Uh, also, one of the things that they say this knife is good at, they kind of advertise it as a uh, tactical knife, but it, it's supposed to be uh, useful as basically a utility knife. Being what it is, it's good for hacking, it's very well balanced for throwing, and it's good for slashing. Uh, but I would not say this is really good, a good stabbing blade. And uh, basically, with the Tanto, it's supposed to... Tanto, Tonto, Potato, Tomato... Uh, this is supposed to be good for stabbing, give it a good edge, but the problem is the reinforcement, the four millimeter thickness does not come out very much, so you can lose this edge pretty easily, and people have tested them, and they do lose their edge pretty easily. So it doesn't go out further, far enough here, because I would try to get um, this thickness to kind of creep out uh, all the way uh, in this point to kind of reinforce it. So if this edge was carried all the way, all the way and kind of tapered back to give this point more of uh, rigidity that would probably make it more of a tactical knife because with tactical knives it's a little bit different they need to hold their edge a little bit better or at least have a better stabbing uh, platform I guess you could say they're, they're typically going to have like a 1090 or 1095 uh, steel it's going to be a little bit harder but it's designed for things like uh, probably like body armor and stuff like that and with um, that you're probably going to want a, a little bit of a pointier edge. So in general, I see this only as a utility knife or even a recreational knife just to fool around with. So I don't believe that it's actually a good tactical knife or it can be a defense knife in the sense of hacking uh, an unarmored um, person or animal or whatever. Uh, so this might be good against animals like dogs or, you know, something small like a coyote or something like cougar, maybe, if you really want to treat it like that. But you can kind of tell that this is uh, basically meant to be more of a utility knife than anything, given that it has the metal of a machete rather than a serious uh, uh, fighting knife, I guess you could say. That would take a little bit of a harder steel for continued usage. So uh, this could be good as, as being a utility knife. It's good for batoning wood, uh, processing wood. I was able to actually chop up some pretty uh, generous sized logs, uh, some that were like 12, 13 inches. It took a little bit of a while, but being that I can treat this like a machete and it holds it edge, its edge pretty well with hard impacts, I do appreciate how well it holds its edge and how easy it is to sharpen. That's one of the advantages this knife has. It's good. It's easy to get back on uh, uh, to hone the blade, I guess you could say. But I wish that if uh, to make it a better utility blade, I wish it was a little bit longer all the way down to here. And being a little bit thinner would probably help this uh, with other processing. But uh, given that it's pretty thin, it's pretty good for batoning purposes, and it's designed for uh, hard wax. So batoning wood and splitting logs, pretty easy. But again, you're kind of limited on the size of the log because it doesn't go all the way. So you're not really getting a 7-inch blade. You're actually you know, only getting maybe eh, you know, about you know, a 5-inch uh, blade to work with. So 
you know, it's really not all that much. So overall, the length is uh, one foot. So yeah, you gotta uh, what you see is what you get in that aspect. So anyways, next thing to talk about since I've already rambled on is basically the sheath. So the sheath, this is a good tactical knife sheath and utility knife uh, sheath because it's got kydex and nylon. Nylon's nice and flexible, but when this thing is secured, there really isn't much. Uh, but if you wanted to make this completely silent, obviously wrapping it a little bit with 550 cord, kind of like what you do with dog tags or whatever, if it bumps up against something, it doesn't really create that much of a, a kind of an echoing. So even with this inserted, it doesn't really deaden down too much, especially down here. And as you can see, it does have a drain hole. So it's got the, it's got the potential for a general purpose knife. Uh, I like that. Uh, one of the things about a tactical knife that you typically want to look for is the retention is uh, basically common sense and simple. So uh, you can take this off and just hang it on, upside down on the shoulder and you'll have a friction fit. Or if you want this on a belt, it's pretty easy to attach to a belt. And this is kind of something that people love and hate. Having Velcro with a button, uh, they feel like this weakens it a little bit, and it may. But uh, <clears throat> here's the thing, if you have like a web belt with stuff already on it, you don't want to have to take stuff off in order to position this right, especially if you're trying to find something that works. You can just take it off pretty easily, and the Velcro holds on pretty, uh, pretty well. You shouldn't really be having to snag on to where this is going to be a concern, but you can always super glue the Velcro in place if you want. Then you can also take it off with a Phillips head, and then obviously you can do thread lock or whatever. And you know, if you don't want this on there, obviously you can just you know cut it off or whatever. Because uh, back here it's just a simple stitch. Uh, so you know, if you really hate this that much, you can just cut this off or start undoing the stitching, and you're good. You got a floppy knife that doesn't have much retention but it's up to uh, the end user obviously but I like this sheath that it has but with uh, some modification it can be silenced and uh, be a better I guess tactical sheath so anyways I really enjoyed the uh, GI Tanto I, I don't know of anybody who really hates this uh, but for its intended purposes I don't see this as a tactical knife I think they're kind of trying to get people to like it because they're trying to appeal to a, a wider audience um, and uh, hoping to get more buyers by basically making it into a general purpose knife or trying to make it seem like one. Uh, Cold Steel has a lot of you know nice little uh, demonstrations and stuff of what their knives can do but one of the things that I actually uh, heard uh, is that they use a, a, basically a sharpening band or a sharpening wheel which kind of heats up the metal a little bit and can kind of degrade the edge uh, because they're basically adding extra heat and so whenever you heat up a blade uh, like in a fire and then it cools down whether it's slow or fast you can kind of degrade the metal uh, depending on how the heat treatment was or the metal that you're using the molecular structure of that blade can be compromised I know it's getting kind of nerdy and nitty-gritty on uh, the details uh, maybe unnecessarily but that is something that people have brought up and so kind of sharpening this with a with the stone and keeping it cool is probably the best idea if you want to use this for any serious role. Uh, for me, uh, I use this as a, as a processing a wood processing knife uh, for you know getting my winter wood uh, for my wood burning stove to keep the house warm and uh, it's a good general purpose knife instead of using like a miter or using electricity or whatever I like manual labor so this is a good knife for camping and I would highly recommend it for that and even recreation because uh, it's fun to work with sharp objects right so anyways uh, that's that's basically my review and my experience with this knife uh, go ahead and leave a comment below and check out my blog on uh, link down below to get a little bit more detail and close-up pictures and uh, I appreciate you guys watching this and you guys have a good one.